Hello there, this is St. John's United Church of Christ, located at 11 South Price Street in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. This is our 14th online service. It is June 21st, 2020, the third Sunday of Pentecost, and it's Father's Day, so happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Um, some highlights from our newsletter again is to remind you that uh, with the recommendations from our Pennsylvania Southeast Conference Minister, uh, we will con continue to do online services until the end of this month. Um, Consistory will be meeting before the end of the month, and we will be deciding what we will be doing for July. Uh, so please stay tuned for that, um, and we look forward to getting back to the church very, very soon. So again, at this point, until the end of June, uh, the building is still closed. If you have anything like Redner's receipts or offerings you wanted to uh, send to Keith, you may do so. Otherwise, you may wait until we get back to the church. Um, if you'd like to donate anything to Operation 143, again, you may also drop that off uh, in Pottstown uh, on High Street. Again, thank you for watching us on YouTube. And uh, if you are listening to us for the very first time, we thank you. If and we also invite you to be a part of our church family as we seek to know and do God's will in this community. Please enjoy the prelude. Please join me in the call to worship. The sun shines more brightly. Its warmth stays with us for so many more hours. So we shake free of our routines. In this new moment, we wander about the wilderness, hoping God will open our eyes, praying God will make us worthy, wanting to grow with God. Let us grow together in the wild ways of our God. Please join us in singing hymn number 503, O Savior, Walk With You, verses 1 and 2.
Wow, God, you do great and wonderful things. It's what makes you our God. There is nothing else in this world like you. There's nothing else like your love. Wow, God, come and worship with us. Help us to grow in your love. Abraham was very distressed because his son, Ishmael, was cut out of the community because Sarah could no longer tolerate Hagar. So Sarah threw out into the wilderness. And this is just distressing. We are distressed whenever relationships are broken. Still, we confess to God that there are family and friends we have cast out. Knowing this, you are invited to offer your silent confession to God by taking one of the small strips of cloth that you may have at home, and then you may write someone's name uh, that you have left behind in the wilderness and began to weave or braid it together with some stripe bearing your name. We also know that during this time of crisis, such as COVID-19, some communities are often cut off from resources they need for survival, work, food, health care. They suffer, suffer disproportionately beyond the boundaries of our own communities. Knowing this, you are invited to offer your silent confession to God by taking another one of these small strips that you may have of cloth or paper, writing the name of that person or a community that is suffering because they are cut off from what they need. Weave or braid that piece of cloth or that paper, if you wish, into uh, the, onto the original stripes. The God of Hagar and Sarah, the God of Isaac and Ishmael, continues to call us into community across boundaries, providing water in the desert and the promise of a future. Let us believe that grace is working in our lives, opening hearts, restoring justice, making all things new in Jesus Christ. Let us praise God. daughter's first hero, the man she admires from the start, and whether she's small or completely grown up, he has a warm place in her heart. Happy Father's Day! The first scripture lesson this morning is from Genesis 21, 8 through 21. The child grew and he was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom he she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named after you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about the wilderness of Bathsheba. When the water in the skin was gone, the, skin, the cast the child under, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him in a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Do not let me look on the depth of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, what troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy, and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. 
He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. The second lesson is from Romans 6, 1 to 11. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on in living it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might, might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The Gospel lesson is from Matthew 10, 24-39. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be covered and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground, fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I can come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against his mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Please join us in singing hymn number 475, God's Eyes on the Sparrow.
The sermon today, again, is from a website called A Sermon for Every Sunday. It is a lectionary-based ser video sermon by America's Best Preachers for use in worship. Please enjoy. Dave Isay opened the first StoryCorps booth in New York's Grand Central Terminal in 2003 with the intention of creating a quiet place where a person could honor someone who mattered to them by telling their story. Since then, StoryCorps has evolved into the single largest collection of human voices ever recorded. In 1998, Isaiah made a documentary about the last Flophouse hotels on the Bowery in Manhattan. Guys stayed up in these cheap hotels for decades, he says. They lived in cubicles the size of prison cells covered with chicken wire on the top so you couldn't jump from one room into the next. Later, Dave wrote a book on the men that he had met there. He remembers walking into a flop house with an early version of the book and showing one of the guys his page. The guy stood there, staring at it in silence. Then he grabbed the book out of Dave's hand and started running down that long, narrow hallway, holding it over his head, shouting, I exist! I exist! I exist became the clarion call for story call for story core in a lot of ways. In Grand Central Terminal, they built a booth where anyone could come to honor someone else by interviewing them about their life. You come to this booth and you're met by a facilitator who brings you inside, sits across from you, and say your grandfather for close to an hour, and you listen and you talk. Many people think of it as if, if this were to be our last conversation, what would I want to ask and say to this person who means so much to me? Questions like, who has been the most important person in your life? What was the happiest moment of your life? The saddest? What are you proudest of? When in life have you felt most alone? Do you have any regrets? How would you like to be remembered? At the end of the session, you walk away with a copy of the interview and another copy goes to the American Folklife Center at the Library of Congress so that your great, great, great grandkids can someday get to know your grandfather through his voice and story. Dave Isaac has worked to shine a light on people who are rarely heard from in the media. Over and over again, he saw how this simple act of being interviewed could mean so much to people, particularly those who had been told that their stories didn't matter. He says he could literally see people's backs straighten up a bit as they started to speak into the microphone. To be known and to tell our story is something that we long for as humans. And this is one of the reasons that StoryCorps has been so successful. People who have never been listened to have had opportunity to be heard. And that experience has been transformative for both the listener and the storyteller. We are hardwired to create and tell stories, and stories have a way with us. We long for them and we make meaning out of them. We define ourselves by our stories, and we tell stories to learn more about one another. This morning's Gospel from Matthew comes from the middle of Jesus sending instructions about the mission. The verses follow Jesus' instructions to the disciples of what to take, or rather what not to take with them on that mission. Take no money, no bag, no sandals, no staff. 
Proclaim the good news that the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out the demons. But this discourse focuses on the realities the disciples will encounter in the world. And he says to them this, So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. It seems to me from this discourse in Matthew's gospel that God, too, loves stories. And Jesus knows that telling our stories and listening deeply to the stories of others is holy, even transformative. As Jesus prepares the disciples for all they will encounter as they go into the world proclaiming the gospel, he exhorts them to tell their stories Stories of how their lives got intertwined with Jesus and how their world has been turned upside down because of this good news. Stories of how the kingdom of heaven has come near. Stories of what they've learned about God by sitting down with lepers and centurions and tax collectors, the sick, the tormented, and the paralyzed. Stories of how following Jesus led them to see God in the stories of the poor in spirit and those who mourn, the meek and those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful and the pure in heart and the peacemakers and the persecuted. Of course, stories of this kind upset all the systems of the empire and the order of the day. But in the Jesus movement, again and again and again, room is made for those on the margins to be fully known, to tell their stories and to say, I exist. And more and most importantly, to know and to believe I exist to God. And this is such good news that it can't be held back or kept a secret. Because the mission Jesus has in mind for us is not to remain a tight-knit, closed-off community. No, not at all. Go and share your story and listen to the stories of others. Tell it like it is in my kingdom. I wonder, too, if Jesus knows that Sharing some of our stories in the light can actually be really difficult. We long to tell our most authentic stories, and yet we fear telling our stories. As Frederick Beekner describes it, we run the risk of losing track of who we truly and fully are. And little by little, we come to accept these highly edited versions of ourselves. So it's important to tell our stories and our secrets. Tell it in the light, is the way Jesus says it. Even the parts you fear, tell in the light. The things you fear people will know about you, the things you've tried so hard to keep locked up and hidden away so that no one will ever know the depth of your struggles. Your anxiety, your failings, your pain, your wounds, your addictions, your hang-ups, your questions. And as soon as Jesus says, tell it in the light, he says, do not fear. And he speaks of how even the sparrows are of value to God. And so too are you 
of great value to God. This is the God of the sparrows, this God who cares deeply for even those small creatures that are sold for half a penny. God loves you more than these. God loves you more than anything. In fact, God will stop at nothing to make sure that you know you are loved and valued beyond measure. For you are created in the image of God, the Imago Dei. The very imprint of God is at your core. And you do not have to be afraid. Because God has counted your every hair, your every wrinkle, your every cell. And you are loved. No matter what has been done or left undone in your life thus far, your story can be told and new life can be found. For you are ultimately a child of God. This is your truest identity and everything else stems from it, flows out of it. And if we know and believe our truest identity to be child of God, we can tell our stories and hear the stories of others in the light of God's love without fear. Jesus sends the disciples out with few, if any, supplies, but he sends them out with everything they need the power of story, and the assurance of God's love and care. One of the great preachers and storytellers of the last century, Fred Craddock, says this about stories. Our stories must be trusted to carry the message. The greatest difficulty in storytelling is the matter of whether or not we trust a story to carry the freight. Do you trust the kingdom of God, the message to something as fragile as a story? Some believe that telling stories to change the world is like trying to break up concrete by throwing light bulbs against it. I've been present when someone threw light bulbs against concrete walls and the walls cracked and fell. May we find spaces in which we can be brave enough to tell our stories in the light and to proclaim from the rooftops that all of our hope is rooted in the love of God. Redeeming and reconciling love, love powerful enough to cast out fear, love radical enough to reorder our world. And God, somehow entrusts all of this to you and me and to something as fragile as a story. Amen. Please join me in prayer. We give our thanks, Creator God, for the fathers in our lives. Fatherhood does not come with a manual, and reality teaches us that some fathers excel while others fail. We ask for your blessings for them all and forgiveness where it is needed. This Father's Day, we remember the many sacrifices fathers make for their children and their families and the ways, both big and small, they lift children to achieve dreams thought beyond reach. So too, we remember all those who have helped fill the void when fathers pass early or are absent, grandfathers and uncles, brothers and cousins, teachers, pastors and coaches and the women of our families as well for those who are fathers we ask for wisdom and humility in the face of the task of parenting give them the strength to do well by their children and by you let us pray for judy mark bob and nancy Dottie, joan dale joe morgan corinne barbara and tom jean lois paul marlene Chris, Patty and Mike, Shirley, Joan, Sandra, Veronica, Wayne, Matthew, Leah, Joan, and Bill. 
our church, our congregation, for everyone dealing with the coronavirus epidemic, and especially we pray for the healing for the racial unrest that our country has been experiencing this week. Let us pray the prayer our Lord gave us. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day, day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God has helped and comforted us, and it is so good. We will not be distressed, not anymore. We will work in this goodness to mend every broken branch by our family tree. We will use our gifts, tithes, and offerings to rebuild the body of Christ. Let us give to the family that nurtures us in new growth. Grow these gifts in your love, God. Bless our offerings, our hearts, and our hopes in your love to make us worthy of your work in this world. Fill these gifts and each of us with your goodness. Amen. to smooth the way for his children small, doing with courage to stern and grim the deeds that his dad did for him. This is the line that for him I pen, only a dad, but the best of men. Please join us in our closing hymn, hymn number 381, Faith of Our Fathers, verses 1 and 2.
Beloved in Christ, into your hands God gives strength and worth. Take another strip of cloth to weave into and to mend the broken relationships in the body of Christ. Trust that this wild world is full of God's steadfast love. For you, dear servant, we made, were made for this love. Go in this deep peace. Please join us in singing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. And have a wonderful day and a happy Father's Day.